Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 6 of our Geometry Dash game on Scratch 3. Now in case you've not watched parts 1 to 5, I will leave a card for you right here. So in those 5 parts we did quite a lot of stuff and in this video what we'll be doing is we'll be making sure that the backgrounds all change and we also get a more aesthetically pleasing view of the game. So now remember that in the last video I believe we um, coded our flying positions and I'm going to start off right here. So within our tick I'm going to do quite a bit of more stuff. So first of all let us grab an if then, okay not an if else just an if then and this if then is going to activate in case we are touching the player. So this is when the player basically passes through this flying change and um, in the real game when this happens the player switches into flying mode. So we need to broadcast some messages, change the background, etc. Okay, so I'll be broadcasting a message to change everything within the player here and uh, I'll call this message switch variables. Okay, so switch variables because there will be quite a few variables which we'll be creating and changing uh, when we do switch from the ground mode to the flying mode. So we'll see switch uh, variables and after this we will make a new variable called background color okay so background color um you can make this for all sprites and i will click okay so we will um we will not uh, set background color yet but we will simply change background color by one now i'll tell you what this does a little bit later on just make sure you have this block right here um uh, next what i'll do is i'll create one more variable and this one is called mode okay and uh, here we will be checking if the mode is either air or it is ground. Now mode is basically the type of, um, and how to explain it, the kind of mini level the player is within. So for example, if the player is in the ground mode, which is at the start of the game, his costume is basically just this, okay? But in case he goes into the flying mode, his costume changes into this. Uh, now it was a bit fuzzy in the costumes, but uh, I'm pretty sure you could see the change in the stage. So let's head back here and uh, what we'll be checking is if mod is equal to ground and you can type that in as a word right there. If this is the case then we will be switching mod to air and in case this is not the case we will be switching mod to ground. So what we're really doing is if it's ground we're switching to air and if it's air we are switching it to the ground. We're just basically interchanging them and the reason we're doing this is because remember there are two different um, flying changes and when we go into the first one we switch from the ground mode to the flying mode and when we go to the second one we switch from the flying mode to the ground mode. So this if then make sure that that happens very very smoothly. Now I'm going to do one last thing to make sure that this doesn't keep on applying because once we do touch a player we want it to be I mean we want it to end there. We don't want this to keep activating and the mode's going to repeatedly change in case we do not hide or delete this clone. Um, I would prefer just deleting this clone because it's well much easier to do. So I didn't delete this clone after not within the if then but uh, within this bigger if basically not within the if clone is yes. Um, anyway that's going to be all we need for um, uh, for the uh, flying changes. Now we can head over to the stage here and let's add in those variables which we just introduced. So let us set first of all background color to 1 okay and let us set um, the other variable was mode. Let us set mode to ground because well that's the way we are starting. So once, uh, once we've set these two things we can head over to the tick because here is where we're going to be using um, those variables. Um, we don't have it yet um, so I'm going to grab a when I receive tick. So when we do receive tick we will be simply switching the background to whatever the background color is. and. Uh, let me put that in and I'll explain that. So if you head over to your backgrounds, you'll see that we have three different backgrounds. Now these backgrounds don't, you know, really look that appealing just like this. But when we press the green flag and then we continuously keep changing, okay, it doesn't change. But if we do keep changing it, you will start to see that the background looks a lot more appealing when it keeps changing, okay? So the idea is to give the game a better look. Um, now, in order to do that, we need some variable which controls the background or more specifically the color of the background and that is simply the background color. So when we do touch the flying change we'll be switching the background color and when we touch it again we'll be switching the color once again. 
Now remember in the flows itself, I think we added in colors. So we had pink flow, flying flow, um, blue flow, etc. Now the pink flow is going to exist only for a while and then it's going to switch all back into the blue flow. Not back, but it's going to switch into the blue flow, um, which itself is going to be controlled. Okay, so I don't think we have it within this uh, clones yet, within these clones yet. Maybe we'll do that uh, later on. Um, anyway, let's head back to the stage. Now we have, um, we've switched the backdrop to the background color. Um, but at this point, we are lacking something very, very important. And that is the score mechanism. Um, so create a new variable called score. I'll deal with the high score probably later on, but we'll uh, make sure the score works for now. So just set score to zero right here within the init. And once we, you know, are ticking, what we'll do is simply change the score by one. Uh, very, very simple elementary. I don't think I even need to explain this. Um, I will also be showing the score and just moving that box to a corner. Um, I think that looks pretty good. And um, we'll be hiding this later on as well. So add in a show variable score right within the init. Uh, we'll deal with when we hide uh, the variable um, in future vi uh, videos. But this is what you need as of now. All right, so now let's finish up the, um, the flow stuff which I was talking about. So head back into the flows now. And uh, we need to make sure that the flying flows look different. So we just have, you know, the go to coordinates here and we need to change it based on, based on, well, whatever the background is. So grab an if else, we need an if else within an if else, I think. Anyway, just do as I'm doing. So we have an if else and first we check if the background color is equal to one. So if the background color is equal to one, then by default, um, we'll just be switching our costume to not the flying flow, but the purple flow. Because remember, background color is um, uh, equals one is the start of the game. And at the start, we have the purple colored floor. Now, once we've passed through this, what we can do is we can check if background color is equal to three. Uh, I'm sorry, is equal to two. Um, in this case, we will be switching the costume to the pink floor. And finally, when it switches to um, uh, background color three, we'll be switching it to the blue floor. Now, this is very, very important that, you know, you have this part here and we also need another thing to work out. So we need an if then and or rather an if else. OK, so we need to make sure all of this only happens if we are not using the flying um, uh, the flying costume, because in case we're using the flying flow, then we want it to stay there regardless of what the background color is. So remember, even when we do go through one of those flying changes, some of the flying flow should still be visible and it's going to look very, very awkward if that changes suddenly. So um, to fix that, you can just say if not costume is equal to four, which is, I believe, the flying flows. Uh, and you can head over to looks and grab this block which says costume number. OK, um, you can also say costume name is equal to flying flow, but I don't see how that changes anything if that is not the case. Otherwise, all we do is we just go to the coordinates. That's it. No uh, flow color changes because we've set up the um, you know flow costume here itself. OK, so finally, let's finish this off with the darkening sprite. And this is just uh, meant to give the game a more aesthetically pleasing appearance. So we'll uh, this should be pretty simple. So when we do receive an init, very simple, I'm going to be showing it. And I'll also be going to the front layer because I need to make sure it's in front of, you know, or all the obstacles, all the um, all the uh, platforms, the floors and so on. So say go to front layer and we also need to make sure it goes to a particular position, which should be there by default. So it's x0, y negative 130. Now, the next thing we need to do is switch the, um, you know, uh, uh, see whether the, we should show or hide the back or hide the darkening based on the background. So when backdrop switches to two, which is what it does when, you know, the flying mode is switched on. In this case, uh, we will be hiding the uh, hiding the darkening. And when background switches to three, in this case, we will be showing it. It's very, very simple and very elementary. This shouldn't be too hard to understand. All right. So now let's test it out. Um, things are still pretty slow for me. So I am messing up quite a bit and I do apologize for that. Obviously, my computer is overloaded with the recording software on. Um, but that uh, this should be okay. So let us just hold out until okay, I just messed up again. So I'll try this last time, um, you should be able to, you know, go past this on your own. Um, since this is this shouldn't be too hard guys. Okay, so okay, I missed up. I messed up again. 
the simple idea is that when we go through the flying changes, um, the background changes along with the flows as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.